Episode 146, How to Better Support Your LGBTQ Plus Child, with Jenny Byam. Welcome to Latter-day Life Coaches, the podcast where each episode is a conversation between me, Heather Rackham, and one of my amazing coach colleagues. Each coach here is a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and a highly trained experienced life coach making a great impact in the lives of their clients. And together, we have one main goal, helping you live your best life no matter what. You ready for this conversation with a coach? Here we go. When your child comes out as LGBTQ+, it can often be overwhelming and filled with a lot of questions, fears, grief, and other big emotions. But Coach Jenny Byam wants to reassure parents that those big emotions and questions are normal and that you can eventually get to a good place with your child's sexuality. She encourages parents to get all the knowledge they can, be patient with themselves, and to know that having an LGBTQ plus child is a blessing. She is talking about all these things on the podcast today. If you are someone who has an LGBTQ plus child and feel you need to know how to support them better, you definitely want to listen to this podcast. You will come away feeling better about your and your child's position. If you feel you could use help and support, please reach out to Jenny and let her help you navigate this new path, not only by being your coach, but also as a parent of an LGBTQ child herself. She understands where you are coming from and wants to be a bridge in this process with you. So please click on her information in the show notes. Enjoy this episode. Welcome to the podcast, everybody. I am joined today by Coach Jenny Byam. Hi, Coach Jenny. Hello. How are you? I'm great. Glad to be here. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, so nice to be here. I almost called you by your sister-in-law's name. She had there's there's a there's a her sister-in-law is actually yeah listed on the directory here too. So I had to I had to catch myself, but and Daylene is her name. But anyway, Jenny, it's so nice to have you. Jenny is a coach here on the directory. And she has a niche that I think is very important. And that will just, you will understand what that is, I think, as as she shares her story a little bit and introduces herself. So I'm just going to throw it to you, Jenny. Okay. So let me breathe here for a minute. Um, I'm from Southern Alberta, Canada. I grew up in the church and I've been married for 30 plus years. Um, I have two wonderful children and I tell people that I only have two children because they're 12 years apart and I had my oldest and my youngest and nothing in between. <laughs> love it. Yeah. Um, I'm a pioneer woman of sorts. Um, I love everything homemaking and homesteading. My husband and I have a small hobby farm that includes ostriches, pigs, chickens, ducks, and other small animals. And I'm a life coach, like you said, and I coach LGBTQ plus teens and their parents with coming out and everything that happens after that. And um, the reason why this is an important subject for me is because I have a transgender son um, who came out a few years ago. And I'll just tell you the funny, his funny coming out story. I didn't realize that my son was part of the LGBTQ space. My husband and I were sitting in the kitchen one day. It was one evening after school and, you know, he's, ADHD and he was kind of, you know, up and moving around and he, we were just kind of sitting there chatting and he said, and by the way, I'm bisexual and ran into the bathroom and closed the door. And my husband and I just kind of sat there and looked at each other and we were like, okay, and didn't realize he was sitting in the bathroom on the toilet texting his sister whom he'd already come out to. Mm. And she said, get out there. You have like the two most understanding parents ever what are you doing sitting in the bathroom? And so he came out and it just kind of evolved from there. And as time went on, we learned that he was transgender and it's just been a journey for all of us. And it's been an amazing journey at that. So that's my story. What I love that. And how tender is that, that your daughter, his sister recognized that you guys were a safe place and that you have the most understanding parents that she said to him. And I think that is, I think that speaks volumes. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. And we are very laid back and, and I would think like to think we're quite understanding. So it was just kind of a funny way that he came out to us. (laughs) That is, it is funny. 
Um, is he your older or your younger child? He's my younger child. He just turned 18 and graduated from high school. Okay. Okay. Not that that matters. I just, you know, I like to know who we're talking about, your oldest or your youngest. (laughs) Okay. So for people listening, I having a child come out as LGBTQ plus can be a surprise to so many parents. And like, I'm assuming it was very much a surprise to you. It sounds it like, yeah. yeah what are some things that parents should be prepared to say or not to say when, when, when they have that conversation or when a conversation like that unfolds or when someone just says, and by the way, yeah, I'm bisexual, right? Like how, right. what does that look like for you as a parent? How should, what are some things teach us? Okay. So it's funny because I had this conversation with my son this morning and I said, okay, so what would you say to somebody? What would you tell a parent to say or not to say? And so he said, so this is something your your child has probably been thinking about or struggling with for a very long time. He's like so much longer than you think, months, maybe even years. So he said, the first thing that you say is thank you for trusting me enough to tell me. And then ask, what does that mean for you going forward? What does that mean for your child? So you would say, what does that mean for you going forward? Are there pronoun changes? Um, Are you gonna start dating people? Are you out to your friends? Those are all like really good questions that you can ask your teen so that you kind of know where you're at as far as like on what level that you're maybe on the same level as them. Um, And then the other thing he said is don't ignore it or tell them it's just a phase. This is something parents commonly do because they're so caught off guard and they don't know how to react to their child when they come out. And they, and they don't want to maybe accept it, that their kid is, mm-hmm. is gay or LGBTQ. And what this does is it really invalidates their feelings and it shuts down further communication. And we want to keep those lines of communication open. So don't tell them this is a phase and don't ignore it. Like, if you don't know what to say, just say thank you. Something you can say is, you know, wow, you know, that's, that's a, big, a big deal for you. You know, can you give me more time to think about this? or, you know, to, you know, write some questions down so that we can come back and have a conversation about this. If you're not quite there, ready mm-hmm. there yet to have that mm-hmm. conversation. I would think that a parent might think, and whether they're right or wrong, that this might just be a phase, but whether you think or, or whatever it is you're thinking, it still doesn't mean that that's what you should say, right? Yeah. Because that's going to just cut down those lines of communication mm-hmm. from the very beginning. Yeah. So trying to refrain and, and, and look at it from their standpoint is, mm-hmm. even though you probably can't see from their standpoint, for the most part, it's just like those very first things that you choose to say are probably going to be very important as to how it, your relationship moves forward. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to come on the podcast. I want to give parents the words like you know we talk about giving our children the words the things that they should say when they're with their friends or when they're in a situation i want to give people the words so that they end up being able to have a better relationship and have the the conversations with their teens or with their children that they need to be able to be there for Mm -hmm. biggest thing we can do for our kids is create a safe space for them well and that's all we want to do as parents in general right like that's just what we want to do yeah It just doesn't have any bounds. Sometimes we think, well, I can give them a safe space except for this, right? Right. And there is no exception here. This is the same. Yeah. Okay. So we've given them some words, a few things that they could, you know, have in their pockets to pull out to say, what other things can they expect? I know there's got to be a lot of emotions. What should a parent expect? Okay. So as a parent, when your child comes out, Denial is usually like kind of the first thing that comes in because it can be so overwhelming and so new. Um, You feel caught off guard. A lot of times you feel caught off guard. So this um, is truly difficult for parents because it it means you're you're having to face what gay means to you and your family. And so a lot of a lot of parents will deny that and just not even sure, not even be sure how to handle it. And that usually turns into grief. I'll kind of go through a few of the stages or emotions that that parents will feel. Um, It turns into grief. As humans, our minds start to go and we start to think of all the things we might be losing if our child comes out as LGBTQ. You know, like for instance, getting married or going on missions or, or just in general, like 
things we might and the, the idea of what we thought their life was going to be and then maybe how their life is going to be so we experience this sense of grief and a sense of loss and that is totally normal for parents to feel that way but i want to tell you that in time you begin to realize as a parent of an lgbtq person or teen um that they can still have amazing and fulfilling lives it just looks a little bit different mm -hmm. and obviously that takes time but I, I want to give you know people the reassurance that in time that does does get better blame is something that that come that tends to come up um, parents will often try to find a reason you know why their kid had to come out what does this mean and so sometimes they'll blame themselves well, we are, we always want to find a reason, right? Yes. We always want to, we are, our brains are meaning makers. That's just what they, they have to have a meaning or a reason. And yeah. so that totally makes sense that they have to find whether it's a reason or blame, whatever, it's still well, the as same. Parents, we, we usually take responsibility for things that happen in our kids' lives, right? Yeah. And so we will blame ourselves. And, and then and sometimes we also like look to friends or groups that we maybe think have an influence on them and we blame them. Hey, can you give me a little bit of like what I, I'm curious about the arsenal that a parent could use against themselves in that situation? What sort of blame can parents do? Do they tend to do they tend well, to use against I themselves? Wrong? You know, okay. did, I, did I not support my child enough? You know, did I not give them enough? I don't know. I mean, it really depends on the child, the type yeah. of personality that the child is, you know, did I not put them in enough sports or put them in enough, you know, things that maybe would have steered them toward a different, toward a different direction. Mm, okay. You know, okay. Like we look, we look at all the things that maybe went wrong or, um, you know, things we could have done differently and, and you start to nitpick and pick things and, and think, but, um, it's really important to note that research shows that being gay or transgender is not anybody's fault. Um, it's not a disease or a choice. There are normal variants of human sexuality and gender identity that arise as a result of complex interactions of biological, genetic, and hormonal factors. So being LGBTQ is not anybody's fault. It's just who we are. Like there's lots of different people in the world and some of us are part of the LGBTQ spectrum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that and bringing that up. I and I listened to you talk about all those emotions that they most likely will feel. You know, the grief, the denial. There's a couple um, more. So there's blame. fear. Fear. Fear's yes, I can one. imagine that. Yes. One of the biggest reasons why parents are afraid when their children come out is because they don't have enough knowledge about it. Mm. Right? We're, we're, we're mostly afraid when we don't understand. We're mostly afraid when, you know, if, if it's new to us and, you know, we don't, we don't know the lingo or we don't, we don't know people that are LGBTQ. Like I, I felt that way. I was afraid. We're afraid of, te of telling people. You know, what are people going to think about me? What are, are, are people going to think I'm a bad parent? How are our family and friends going to handle it? How are people in our faith community going to handle it? You know, because of the way that we're raised in the church, it's it can be very hard to feel like it's okay to be LGBTQ. Yeah. And and that causes us fear. And we're, we're also sometimes we're really afraid for our child's safety. You know that they're going to be discriminated again there's a lot of hatred and discrimination in the world right now um, for lgbtq people and so that also really plays a huge role in this fear that parents have for their kids for their safety yeah, which is all like you think about those emotions and they're all coming from this place of immense love for your child right like you love them so much and you just with your understanding of the situation, you really just want them to be loved and safe and all those emotions then come as a result of that. And I, th I think that there are just things that we can get clear on, right? I think a lot of what I am always think is interesting is that so many things and so many fears that we have like towards our our theology and and our beliefs there if we could get really clear on understanding god's true nature and better knowing who he is so many of those fears the fears that we have like 
what does this mean for a church? What does this mean for, you know, a lot of those things could be not as difficult if we had a better understanding, if we really did some deep study about understanding who God is and and yeah. shift our perspectives about him. But I am curious if you can share a little bit with us. So what, do, what should a parent do then when what they believe religiously often doesn't really line up with their child being LGBTQ or what they think it should be? And I don't want to say I'm trying to be careful there because we have the way that we talk about it in church and in our religious perspectives. And those are, I think, we've been pretty dogmatic in the past about what those things are. So it's kind of our traditional beliefs. I'm, you know, when our traditional beliefs about things don't line up with maybe our child be, being LGBTQ, what can, it, what do we do? Where does a parent go with that? So I think it is a very individual thing. Like I said, we kind of go through these, this, these phases after our child comes out and then we're like, okay, well, this, we realize this, you know, this doesn't line up with how, with how we were raised or what we believe and parents will experience a great uncomfortableness because of that. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that I tell people is you need to give yourself time. We want to see results. We want to understand better. We want to know the answers to things. And what I have learned is sometimes there's not answers for things. It's really hard to sit in that uncomfortableness obviously pondering and praying about it makes you know a lot of sense and does help a lot i can't stress enough like i said that the reason why parents can be so uncomfortable with is the unknown and so ask questions and look for support there's a lot of different groups and support things out there that i'll that i'll tell you in a little bit about Finding somebody that you can talk to about it, whether it's your partner or, you know, a, a family friend or a close person that you know that is going through the same thing, having that support, even, even if it's just being able to talk about what it is you're going through makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. I would even no. think though, like in your spousal relationships, like you're going to, as a couple, going to be in different places in yes. this too, right? So that probably becomes a little bit challenging as well. Not only are you trying to navigate your relationship with your child who has come out, but then you're also navigating your relationship with your spouse when you have different, you're probably in different places in how you feel about it as well there too. Yeah. And there, there can, there can be an incongru incongruence between you and your partner mm -hmm. with exactly how you feel about you know, LGBTQ yeah. people or your child in general. I think a big thing is don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry to feel like you have to answer all these questions and find out right now what those answers are. The biggest thing is to focus on now, like focus on today. What's going on today? What can we learn about today? How can I help my child today instead of, oh my goodness, you know, what if he doesn't go on a mission or what if he leaves the church or, you know, what if she doesn't get married in the temple or any of those things that, you know, sometimes come along with having a kid that's LGBTQ. Those things can drive you crazy, mm -hmm. right? And I think it's also really important to not get into this all or nothing thinking. Like one of the things I work with with my clients is it's not black and white. They're not like black and white thinking can drive you crazy. So if you like, as far as like with the church goes, if you're always thinking like, this doesn't, this isn't congruent with what I believe instead of, you know, God created a plan for everybody. We have LGBTQ people. He would not make LGBTQ people and not have a plan for them. Mm -hmm. That actually has been something that I've really come to believe myself with my son is that God loves all of his children and he has a plan for all of us. Yeah. And yeah, I don't have all the answers right now, but you know, there, there is a time and a place and, and I, I hope that we will, you know, receive the answers and for sure revelation for those types of things. For sure. I think probably I, I, my mind always wants to go to this place of curiosity rather than thinking this doesn't fit with what I know. 
but reversing it to how does this fit? How can this fit with, with what I, what I think I know, right? Cause, and, and, and what more do I need to know and understand? And I, I do think that when we come at it, when we look at it from that closed black and white, like you said, there isn't a lot of, there's not a lot of room for growth there, but when we can flip it and just see, okay, how does this fit? How can I help this fit? You know, we look at it a little bit differently. Yeah, for sure. All right. So there's all of that. So many different things, you know, like you said, just take it one day at a time, which really tends to lend itself to overwhelm, right? Like just the overwhelm of a lot happening at one time, something that you probably didn't expect, something, you know, all those things that are coming up for you. What are some good resources for parents that they can turn to when they need some support? So the best thing you can do as a parent is learn. Mm -hmm. When you learn, you gain not only knowledge, but you gain competence, you gain wisdom, you gain assurance in what is going on. Like you, it can be very um, peace promoting, I guess, is what I'm trying mm-hmm. to say. I don't even know. Anyway, um, so a couple of podcasts that I recommend are Questions from the Closet with Charlie Bird and Ben Chilotti. Great podcast. They talk about all things coming out, what it was like for them. They have different people on their podcast and they talk about what it's like to be in the church. You know, how do you navigate that? Whether you should tell people if you're coming out, like the, the topics are amazing. And then another one is Listen, Learn, and Love by Richard Osler. He actually interviews LGBTQ people, all different types of LGBTQ people. And he has a way of, honestly, when you listen to him, it's like the way he speaks is so Christ-like. He has a love, a love for all people, but I think he has a very soft place in his heart for LGBTQ people. I love that podcast. It is so good. And then liftandlove.org is a really great resource for LDS and families of faith. They have a bunch of different things on there for uh, LGBTQ people and their families. Every week they have different uh, stories about different families that have had a loved one that's LGBTQ that comes out and they like tell the whole story and it's, it's really great. And then of course, I have an online support group for parents as well and a new course that's coming out that people can join. And I also offer uh, one-on-one coaching to parents and teens if they're looking for extra support. Okay. Thank you for sharing those resources. I think we can, I love that you just said, we just can learn, right? We, there's just so much we can learn. And I think what the more we learn, the more we figure out how there's a place for it Mm -hmm. rather than thinking there is no place when we learn, we just expand our knowledge and, and things, we have more pieces to a puzzle to put back together again. So thank you. And we will link to, I'll have um, Jenny share with us at the end where you can find her resources and we'll link to those things in the show notes. But so we've talked a lot about how a parent can handle, you know, when a child does come out, the words they can say, the things they can do and not do. What about, a parent whose child, who they've already experienced this, a child's already come out and maybe they didn't handle it the way that they wished that they could have, right? I We all have things like that in our life. Oh, I could have done that differently. This yeah. is probably, this is no different. It probably feels different, bigger, but I'm curious what they can do if that is the case. So the biggest thing you can do is go to your child and say, I've messed up and apologize to them and also thanking them for trusting you in the first place even though you didn't handle it well Mm -hmm. Um, that's a really big thing and then tell them that you want to do better and then do it it's one thing to say oh i want to do better or i'm gonna you know try and use the right pronouns or things like that but really making a conscious effort to show your child that you are there to support them and that they are safe with you like we talked about you know, creating a safe place for your kids. You want them to come to you. You want them to feel like, like for some kids, there's no other place for them, but their homes, right? Mm -hmm. And if then, if they don't feel safe in their homes, then they really sometimes feel like there's nowhere at all for them to go. And then that's what leads to 
you know, other things like self-harm and, you know, attempted suicide. And so if you feel like you've messed up, go to your kid, you know, swallow your pride, go to them and just say, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, like that's, I think that's the biggest thing that you can do. Which is something we can do at any time, obviously, yeah. not even just for conversations yeah. like this, but I think our kids need to know that we aren't, that we know that we, we make mistakes yeah. just as they're going to make mistakes that we're all yeah. here on this earth, learning and growing and loving together. So important. So as the coach, where do you try to help people get in regards to their thoughts and their feelings when it comes to their child being LGBTQ? I mean, that's a, a really big question. And I'm sure that that place that, you know, they evolved to is different for everybody, but what are your particular goals for them? So because there are so many emotions and thoughts going into this, when I meet with people, I try and meet them exactly where they are. Um, if a parent is really struggling to accept their kid's orientation, we look at, like I said, all or nothing thinking or black and white thoughts, because those are the things that really keep people stuck and trapped. And we work with those to get them beyond, beyond those thoughts. What I've found is that in time, most parents will experience a paradigm shift when it comes to LGBTQ people. They go from, this is what it was like before my kid came out to this is what I, to this is this is what I was like before my kid came out to this is what I'm like now. Mm. And it's just it's learning and growing with your child like it's this isn't a, just a journey for your child, this is a journey that you are on it's it's almost like there's two lines like two roads going there's your child's journey coming out and being LGBT and BTQ and then there's yours and hopefully they go, you know together and sometimes they cross over but um it's a journey for both parent and child mm -hmm. and what i want you to know is like i said when your child comes out they have been thinking about this and learning about this for a long time they didn't just decide yesterday that they were going to come out and be gay or you know transgender lgbtq this is something that they've been dealing with for a very long time so it's really important to sell, to give yourself grace and to be able to say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna take my time. I'm gonna learn as much as I can. And it's okay if I make mistakes. It's okay if I don't have all the answers, but to really give yourself, you know, the time and and the and focus on the, and the energy that you need to, to do what you need to do to help that child and support them. I think it's interesting to hear you talk about that paradigm shift. You know, this is who I was before and this is who I am now. And I've not, met a single person who has had a child come out who does not wish that they were the person before. I, mm -hmm. I feel like everybody that I have talked to is like, they, there's this piece of them that they have found that is, that they didn't know that they needed or, or that they had space for. And that, and that there's a, there's a love in their life that they had not experienced before. And so I, I guess I just offer that because I'm sure there's people thinking, oh, they probably miss the person they were before. And, and, and I think there's, I think we need to know that there is so much hope and there's so much love that comes in our life from embracing change, from really digging deep and coming to understand a situation and looking at it from a Christ-like perspective, like there are pieces of us that we will discover that we, yeah. that we love and we didn't know. Yeah. And that's kind of what I wanted to say in the end is that if I promise that if you listen and learn as much as you can and really try to see your child through Christ-like eyes, that you will become a better version of yourself. And um, having an LGBTQ kid will become an amazing blessing in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing your heart with us. I know that this is a vulnerable space, right? Like, because just as you shared, you know, parents fear judgment, they fear all the questions, things that they, and, and obviously you've grown beyond that and you recognize that there, that there's really needs to be no place for that, but it still takes courage and strength to share stories. I Before we leave, I would love if you could share with people where they can find um, more of you, where they can get the resources, your resources that you have to offer them. 
Sure. So I am on Instagram at LGBTQ coach Jenny. Um, I'm on Facebook at Jenny Byam coaching and my website is Jenny Byam coaching.com. And there'll be links to different things on those different platforms. And we will link to all of that in the show notes here. So we'll make it nice and easy for people to find you, but thank you. Thank you for being here. And you know, to those that are listening, maybe this is not even if this is not something that you are dealing with in your own immediate family, there are people that I'm certain are very close to you who will have this, will have these circumstances in their lives. And I think this is a very important, this is a very important resource to share. Yeah. And you just don't know, right? Yeah, you don't, you don't know. Well, thank you. Hey, we just wanted to thank you for spending part of your day here with us at Latter-day Life Coaches and being part of this conversation. Share this with your friends so that you can have a conversation with them on this topic as well. And as always, subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Have a good one, my friends.